In this video, we'll talk about selection sort. So basically we'll talk about the theory in this and then in the next video, we'll talk about the practical of it. The thing is, when you talk about sorting, we have different techniques available. In the previous video, we have talked about bubble sort and it was working, right? But also the amount of time it takes, basically the time complexity of the bubble sort is n square. Now that's not the main issue. Of course, that's a main issue. But then in this video, we are not going to solve that quadratic uh, time complexity, but at least we can reduce the number of steps. Now in bubble sort, we are going from start to end multiple times. That's not the big issue. The big issue is swapping because every time in the inner loop, we were doing this swapping multiple times and it consumes a lot of time and memory. So what if we can reduce that? And that's where selection sort comes into picture. Now what we do in selection sort is we don't actually swap every time when you compare two values, but what you do is from the entire array or the list, you find the minimum or the maximum value depending upon how you want to implement it. So let's say we, go, we are going for the minimum value. So what you do is from the entire array, you find the minimum value and then you make sure that the minimum value stays at the start. Now, once that is done, now that is your sorted part. So from the entire list, you create two sections, the sorted section and the unsorted section. So once you find two, that goes into the sorted section, which is at the start. And then you scan more values. Now, let's say when you scan, you find, hey, we have three, which is the minimum value in the unsorted array. Then what you do is you pick up that three and replace it with the second location. Now, what happens to the value of the second location? Now that will be swapped where the value of three was. So what you're doing here is you are swapping by selecting the minimum value. So when you say selecting, that's your selection sort. Now what it does is you're not basically swapping value inside the inner loop. You are doing that in the outer loop, which means the number of swapping in a code will reduce. Now to understand this more, let's look at an example. So let's say we have six values here, which is six, five, two, eight, three, seven, and we want to sort them. So how will you do it? First of all, going from all the values. Now, of course, as I mentioned before, you can go for the minimum value or you can go for the maximum value. So let's go for maximum value. Okay, so ultimately you will get the same output, but the way you do, do the code will be different. So let's say we are going for a maximum value. Now from all these values, we have to find the maximum value. Now, of course, at the start, we don't have any idea which value is the maximum. So let's say you make six as the maximum value because at this point we don't know, right? So let's assume that six is the biggest value from the from all these values. And then you start comparing six with all the other values. So you will compare six with five. If six is still bigger, no issue, go with the next value. If six is still bigger, no issue, go with the next value. Now at this point, we are comparing six with eight and we know now eight is the biggest value. So now what you do is you change your variable or your, you change your biggest value from six to eight and then you start comparing eight with the other remaining value, which is three and seven. So you compare with three, eight is still the biggest. You compare it with seven, seven, eight is still the biggest. Now, once you go through all the values, now you know the eight is the biggest value. So what you do is you make sure that eight goes at the end. Now, if you're doing this with, for the minimum value, what you do is you take the value two, which is a minimum value, and you put that at the start. But since we are going for a different approach where you're finding the biggest value, you will make sure that eight goes at the end. Now, when you move eight to the end, what happens to seven? Now, seven will say, okay, I don't have a place. So eight will say, don't worry. I will come to your place, you come to my place. That is swapping of the values. But if you remember, we are not doing it in every iteration of the inner loop. We are doing that in the outer loop. So once you complete one pass, that's where you do the swapping. So only once for the entire iteration. Okay, now by doing this, we have made sure that you have the biggest value at the end and you got a sorted at the end, which is the eight. And then the first five values are still unsorted. So what you do is you repeat these steps. Again, start with six. Now we'll say, okay, six is the biggest value. Let's assume that. And then you start comparing six with five. If it is a biggest value, six is still bigger. No need to change the value of biggest value. Then you compare it with two, no need to change. But then when, you, when seven comes into picture, seven says, hey, you know, I'm, the big, I'm bigger than you. So six says, okay, you're the biggest value. So now the current value will be seven. The biggest value is seven. Now again, we have to compare seven with three. Now seven is still the biggest. So we have to make sure that after all the situation, we move seven at the place of three. 
and that's what we are going to do now by doing the second iteration so we have completed the second iteration in which you got two values seven and eight at the end and the first four values are same so again you do the same thing next iteration so you have to do this till the you till you complete all the sorting so you again go with six and say hey you know i'm the biggest now let's compare six with five so still the biggest compared with two still the biggest compared with three still the biggest now once you complete that unsorted iteration you will make sure that you move your six to the location of three because that's where the six should be so it will swap with three and then the last three values six seven eight are sorted the first three values are not sorted so again if you observe what we are doing is we are making sure that you got two different sections of sorted values and unsorted values now goes for the first three values so three let's assume three is the biggest and then compared with five now we know that five is the biggest of all or at least bigger than three and then you compare you you make the bigger value as five now three is gone then you compare five with two still five is biggest and now we know that five need to go at the location of two so you have to swap it now comes the first two values again the same thing you will keep doing this till you reach to the end of your array and you move to three and since we only have one value don't need to sort it that's already sorted and by doing this you basically got a sorted array now again compared to the bubble sort we are still going from start to end you have an outer loop you have an inner loop but we are doing swapping only once in every big iteration or in every pass so that's the advantage of using selection sort over the bubble sort about the overall com the, the time complexity is still o of n square but at least it is better than the bubble sort in terms of swapping now question is how you are going to implement this let's see that in the next video